Hello my Sockinners, before I go back to <laughs> sleep a bit more, I thought I'll do a quick uh, round of the midweek cup games, which yeah, I rewatched Milan at one point uh, and the other ones I saw only highlights and not that many. We have Copa del Rey, I saw yesterday a little bit of Barcelona, um, I watched highlights extensively of both uh, the Copa Italia games and I saw also teeny bit, teeny bit yesterday of um, the Coupe de France with uh, Nice against Lyon, but was surely not, not more than uh, 20 or 30, 20 minutes or something like that. But let's walk the reason we'll start uh, in Spain at the Copa del Rey, which actually turned out that this was a pretty big round uh, regarding upsets or near upsets. So we had on Tuesday Athletic Club only after penalties, after 3-3 against Tenerife, Valencia uh, against Cultural Leonesa, who already had uh, eliminated um, Atletico. They almost did Valencia too, but failed on a penalty shootout. Other uh, games of note is, of course, uh, Real Saragossa being steamrolled by Real Madrid. Barcelona getting early on the score sheet, Griezmann of all people. And therefore not having uh, too much tr tr trouble there, after, especially after Langley made it 2-0. Uh, if the Messi corner, I think it was then, I think R2 or 3 or something like that. It was, you know, um, it was comfortable and it was probably good for Barcelona to get a few goals out and maybe show a little bit more um, possession with uh, purpose, something that had been utterly lacking at Valencia. Are they over the hump? Let's see. I want to see them a, a, a performance like that against a bigger team. And then the big surprise, Mirandes. Beat Sevilla 3-1. We don't have yet a draw, but so I leave it at that. As I said, from the quarterfinals, I will look deeper into the Coppa del Rey. Quarterfinals is what we had in the Coppa Italia, who actually is the exact opposite of um, uh, the Coppa del Rey. Coppa del Rey is that the lower uh, league team has always the home field advantage. Only if it's from the same league, then it's uh, the luck of the draw. In the Coppa Italia, it is you have a seeding system where you take last year's standings and, that, uh, and the one who is higher has the home field advantage. That's all geared for big name matchups at the end and still uh, not many spectators. Milan's game against Torino was one where I actually, Torino just got annihilated by Atalanta 7-0 and I actually was hoping that Milan can take advantage of that. And at the beginning it looked like it. Uh, Rebic, um, caused some trouble. It was all the last game of Piontek for Milan, uh, who together with Suso now left. Um, I'm not so sorry about Piontek because he really seemed to have gone by the wayside. I mean, he had a great start, but even at, towards the end of the season, you already could feel uh, something's not quite right. And this season, he has been ter ter terrible. Never give up the number nine shirt at Milan again, especially for... Uh, oh, don't let anyone switch to it. I know it's superstition. For Susan, I'm a little bit more sad because I think that he's a brilliant player and I wish him all the best at Valencia, but he was so frustrating over the past few um, months. I remember a year ago, I thought Susan is by far the best player of Milan and now <clears throat> he seemed like anything he tries, he, he got figured out and he didn't really uh, develop further. Also, the system that Milan was playing didn't really suit him very well. So maybe it's better for him to move on to Sevilla, where he's more needed. So Rebic uh, actually, I think it was just past 10, 10, 10, 10 minutes, makes a really nice run down the left side, uh, puts in a cross that um, Bonaventura can easily put in, make it 1-0 for Milan. I thought, oh, this is going well. Uh, maybe if Milan now can add quickly add a second or a third, and even a third, uh, we don't have to worry about it. Anything but that happened. Milan went off the gas pedal uh, and allowed Torino back in the game. And with some sloppy slot of defending, Premier could make it 1 1 just before the half. There was a hope for offside, but nope, uh, just by hair, not. And the second half that did not come much more. Yes, it was a reserve Milan squad. Uh, always has to be said that as well. And I think also Torino, I think played more uh, closer to a uh, full squad, but still, uh, you're Milan, you're playing at home, even with what you got, you should uh, you should win against this Torino side. 
It even got worse than the 70th. Bremer makes his second goal, and at that point, it wasn't even undeserved. There were some scenes where Milan was defending with everything that they had uh, to not give, give a goal, and then Pioli brings in Ibrahimovic, he brings on Chalanoglu, and uh, I think I also brought on Kessie, and suddenly things started to work. Um, but it took a while. I think it was really around the 85th where you had the feeling, okay, now something is going, and then. Uh, from one attack, Chalonoglu is free, uh, uh, gets, suddenly, uh, gets suddenly free and can slam it home um, in the 91st minute. And then Milan actually had two or three chances and one by Ibrahimovic, where he is in front of goal and just puts it over the bar. This was uh, the second bad miss within a week uh, for Ibrahimovic. They, it should have ended there and then. It should have been 3 to Milan and done. And they really had, their, they were right after the 2 2, they really had at least two, if not three, good chances. And it continued in overtime. They they had great chances, especially Theo Uh But I think uh, also Charles uh, Charl Nogle had the second one. It should have gotten there. It was then a nice shot from Charles Nogle in the one in the sixth minute. And uh, two, two minutes later, Zlatan gets also on their 4-2, and I think everything was decided. So Milan moves on, will play now. Uh, Juventus in and home in the way series. Yeah, uh, I don't like that. I think it's now uh, mid-February is one, and then at the beginning of March, so it's not as strong as it was last year, but still um, not that great. Uh, in the second game, also played at San Siro, and this is why Inter is not playing at the week before. I will never understand, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Inter plays against Fiorentina. Fiorentina is uh, surprisingly in red, but I think this looked actually uh, nice. And Inter had the better of the game, and uh, they missed a few chances, but in the end, Candereva gives them the breakthrough just before the half. And then Typical Inter, uh, it falls, you know, they cannot keep up the high intensity for a long time and um, Fiorentina had their chances and through Caceres then take one um, uh, and it's 1-1 one, one in the 60th and uh, a little bit later Eriksen comes on for Sanchez and Barella can make it 2-1 with, uh, I think it was a pretty nice uh, shot taken there. And Inter can hang on was closer to the 3-1 than they were to the 2-1. Um, Eriksen, I think, is an interesting addition to the Inter squad, but I honestly have to say I am not quite sure if he's well suited for Inter. He might be the best player, but I'm not sure if he can really uh, provide the intensity that Conte uh, demands. Inter now has a home and away against Napoli. So... Uh, the first matchups are February 12th. We have Inter playing Napoli, then Milan again against Juventus. I think one of those needs to be switched because uh, two games in the San Siro back to back that just doesn't sound like a smart thing. And then in between the Champions League games, we have the return legs where Juve is at home and Napoli is at home. I know why, because, you know, you and Napoli finished first and second, so that's why it is that way. I still think uh, you should be more flexible with that. And finally, the Coupe de France also happened, uh, where Belfort eliminates Montpellier. That's, uh, that's a big result. We had a 5-4 between uh, Rennes and Angers, uh, with Rennes uh, moving on there. That must have been an exhilarating game. Um, Marseille, PSG uh, move on. Lille is uh, eliminated by Epinal. And as I said, I saw uh, Lyon. I saw the, the, them get taken lead at Nice. Fortunately, there were not too many people. So Lyon moves on. And here we also have already a quarterfinal set. And there's the big Lyon-Marseille matchup. Belfort plays against Rennes. Dijon, PSG and Epinal plays against Saint-Étienne. Well, that was my few cents on the midweek action in uh, the European leagues in the Cups. Um, let, let me know what you watched uh, and whether you agree with my assessments that I gave. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, 
wish you a wonderful day. Bye.